Hello everyone, Donna Gray here, your Stamping Up demonstrator from the Northern Rivers area in New South Wales, Australia. I know I'm on early. I jumped on early because I wanted to see that this was working. I wanted to make sure that the link that I provided was actually working properly. I finally got technology right this morning. So I'm just going to find myself on my YouTube channel and there I am there. Okay, so we'll turn the volume down there and I'm all good. So how are you all this morning? Please, when you find me, jump on and say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I love getting my crafting out there to more people. So um, please let me know uh, that you have joined me. And hopefully we're going to do some really awesome crafting this morning. So I've got brand new products again. So it's super, super exciting the time right now for us as demonstrators because very, very soon we will, um, we will have a brand new catalogue going live. Now you've probably seen all of us that have been um, showing all of these brand new, fantastic new products. And you're probably thinking, wow, look at all these great new things. And, you know, that is the super exciting thing about Stamping Up. So first of all, if you are new and this is the first time you have joined me, my name is Donna Gray and I'm a Stamping Up demonstrator from the Northern Rivers area in New South Wales, Australia. So you may say, what is a Stamping Up demonstrator? So it can be what you want it to be. If you simply love crafting products and you are... Um, uh, buying crafting products quite often, then you probably might need to think about joining Stampin' Up because what we do is we sell everything to do with our paper crafting. So we sell cardstock, we sell stamps, we sell dies, we sell absolutely everything that you need for your paper crafting hobby. So, and joining Stampin' Up doesn't mean that you have to do videos like this. Joining Stampin' Up could mean that you're joining a, a wonderful crafting community. So being a part of my Wild Heart Crafters team, we're all over Australia. So anyone that lives in Australia can join my team. We are all over Australia and we connect through our team Facebook group and we have an awesome crafting community. And I can tell you that probably 80% of my team have joined wholly and solely just to get the discount. So if you have been thinking about um, getting your crafting supplies a little bit cheaper, you may want to think about joining. Now we do have an awesome joining special at the moment. So I just want to... Um, show you what our joining special and this this actually starts on the beginning uh, sorry the 3rd of June so on the 3rd of June we have not only the awesome starter kit special that you get to choose $235 worth of product and you only pay $169 you actually actually get to choose a bundle of your choice for free. So any bundle that is in the annual catalog, the brand new annual catalog, you get to choose that for free. And then you are guaranteed to get a 20% discount until at least August at this stage. Actually, um, June, July, August, September, October. Yes, you will are guaranteed 20% discount until the end of October. For sure, no matter what, no matter if you don't make the quarterly amount, you will get 20% off all of your next orders. So as you can see here, if you jump on to donnagray.stampinup.net or you text or call me, I can help you over the phone um, and there's my phone number. I just want to show you what happens when you get to my site. So if you type in donnagray.stampinup.net, you will come to this home page here. So on this home page, you will see it says about me, host, join, events, specials and shop now. Now, this will probably look a little bit different because we're launching a brand new online store um, on the 3rd of June. But you will still find that they will have this tab here that says join. So when you click join, it tells you a little bit about what it is um, that you get for joining. So you get 20 to 25% off your all your stamping products, earn additional income based on your sales and recruiting. So, but you don't have to do that. 
set your own schedule and put in as much or as little time as you'd like. So in other words, if you just want to purchase just for yourself, you will get 20% discount. And even just on your own purchases, you could work your way up to 25% discount, depending on how much you spend. Um, you get support through online training resources, quarterly magazine, which we don't get that anymore. So that needs to be taken out of there. Events and demonstrator only online community with thousands of projects and ideas. So Stampin' Up! actually have a, a, a group on Facebook that is called Demonstrator Planning Place and you can be a part of that. Opportunity to earn incentive trips, which um, if you've been following me for a while, you will know that I have earned my third incentive trip. I've been with Stamping Up for four years, but I put a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of effort into it. If you wanted to join Stamping Up as a business, then I can wholly and solely give you tips and tricks and um, help you get a great foundation to your stamping up business you get a chance to learn creative tips techniques share ideas and come into contact with new friends who love participating uh, love paper crafting as much as you do now that there that learning creative tips and techniques sharing ideas and coming in contact with new friends who love paper crafting as much as you do that is my why that is why I joined in the first place was to be a part of um, a community of crafters and being um, being a part of um um, Sydney's saying, are you on your homepage? This is my homepage. This is my, my demonstrator, demonstrator website, Cindy. Um, so you can be a part of the fun. Now, please, the offer that I said, which um, we were just looking at, this one here, um, we will be able to, um, to take advantage of that on the 3rd of June. Okay, so back to me again. So if you're interested in doing that or int interested in just purchasing, please um, make sure that you just go to donnagray.stampinup.net and you can find out all that information or you can call me on my, my mobile or you can email me and, um, and we, can, um, we, can see, we can see that. Are you on your homepage? We can't see that. Um, oh, that's all right. No worries. <laughs> um, so anyway, so being a part of that is super, super awesome. So now what I want to do is I want to show you what our brand new catalog looks like. And if you don't have your hands on one of these awesome brand new catalogs, then please let me know and I would be happy to pop one in the post for you. So good morning and welcome everybody. So when you're joining, please make sure that you hit that share button and share it back onto your Facebook so that we can reach more people and get more people to come and join us to craft this morning. So, hey, Lynn, how are you going? Valerie, Gerald and Cindy, Doris, Mary, Eileen, Glenda, Gloria. Um, we've got someone from, oh, from Georgia, Matthew, how are you going? Judy, Robin, Stephanie, welcome everyone. If, I, if I've missed your name, it's because the comments have flown past. So I do apologize, but welcome everybody. So um, if you don't have your hands on one of these awesome new catalogs, I cannot show you the inside of the catalog until next Wednesday, which is June the 3rd. And I will do a walkthrough of the catalog. So I will pop a video up on my YouTube channel here, showing you page by page what awesome things are in the catalog. So um, you can actually view anything that we have online available. You can view that through my online store at any time. So you can get access to what we have available. And on the 3rd of June, you will be able to access Everything that is in this catalog, you will be able to access that on the 3rd of June. About the only thing I think that's not going to be available, as far as I know, is our new die cutting machine. And it's super, super exciting. And it's in this brand new catalog. So um, when you get your brand new catalog, I'm sure you will have a great time checking that out. All right. So let's get to crafting because that is what you're, you are here for. So... What I thought I might do is I thought I might use the Comfort and Hope stamp set. So once again, 
Here is um, my website, donnagray.stampinup.net, my phone number and my email address. So anytime that you are watching my videos, that will be in the top of my videos all the time. So yes, my spiral binding on my catalogue, Eileen, I got done just at um, a stationery store. We have a place here in Australia called Officeworks. And I think it cost me $5 to get it um, spiral bound. And it's awesome because, and I won't open the pages so I don't get in trouble, but you can see here with my clear cover, I can then fold it and it saves space on your desk. So you're able to um, just have one page open at a time. So what they do is they trim it down the, the spine and then um, pop the holes in and just put the spiral bound in there. But it makes it much, much easier. Plus I get a beautiful clear cover on the front and on the back. Um, of our catalog so that it protects it and makes it nice and pretty all the time. <laughs> so I'm going to use the Comfort and Hope stamp set. Now the Comfort and Hope stamp set is a stamp set that I received um, for a promotion that we had during celebration. And the promotion was um, that if we sold, I think it was the painted poppies. I think it was four painted poppies that we got this stamp set for free. So I got this in my, um, my first um, pre-order, which was absolutely awesome. Now, just remember, if you want to join in on the fun and you want to get in on the fun right now and you don't want to wait until the 3rd of June, you can join today and you can purchase any of these products in your online, in your starter kit, except for this stamp set. Ah, oh, yeah, I don't think you can buy this stamp set. It wasn't on our pre-order. Um, you got your spiral bound, Mary. Yes, and it is so worth it. It is for sure. So what I'm actually going to do is there was a bit of an idea in the catalog and I'm just going to open that beside me here so I can see it. And I wanted to make a card using this stamp set and um, this one, which is also a new one, a grandkid. So this is for, um, and I'm sure that there's a lot of you out there that make cards for your grandchildren because they love getting their handmade cards that are made specially for them from their grandparents. So I thought this was an awesome set. So it's got some great sayings. Um, no amount of money could ever show how much I love you to an amazing grandson, to an extraordinary granddaughter. So it covers both the grandson and granddaughter. You are so loved. We must be related. Um, so proud of you. So smart, so fun and so sweet and so wonderful. So um, congratulations. So there's some great um, things here. Here it says, no amount of money could ever show how much I love you, but here's some anyway. Now, isn't it true that grandparents, they get to a stage that they say, I don't know what to buy my grandchildren anymore. So I've decided that I'm just going to give them money in a card. So we have the perfect sayings here for money in a card. So um, it is a super, super fun set. So I thought I would use that with the Comfort and Hope stamp set this morning. All right. So I'm going off um, one of the cards that's actually in our catalogue and I'm just going to change it up just a little bit. So it has, um, and I'm going to grab a piece of white paper just to pop un underneath me. So on my desk, so I don't actually get anything over my desk. So I'm going to take, sorry, and I'm probably really loud there because I was right up near the, um, <laughs> near the webcam. So I'm going to take one of my oval makeup brushes. Now I've got Misty Moonlight is my cardstock here. That's one of our uh, brand new in colors. And I've also got the Bumblebee color. So I thought I wanted to make a card for a grandson. So I wanted to make it in masculine colors. And I know that we all struggle a little bit when it comes to masculine cards. So I thought I'll show you how my idea and my take on a masculine card. Um, so what I thought I would do, seeing I don't have the, um, the um, Misty Moonlight, I thought I would use my Night of Navy instead. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my oval makeup brush and I'm going to load it up with a little bit of our Night of Navy ink. Now, I want to get most of that off on there. And then I'm going to do some nice circular motions and create a little bit of 
just a, I don't know, not a, a an obvious um, area that I wanted colored. I just wanted some color on the background. Okay. So that's probably about all I want because I want to actually know it needs to come out a little bit further than that. So I'm just going to bring it out a little bit more out onto that card. Now you can see I haven't re-inked that makeup brush. That is it. So you can see that the ink transfers really, really well out of these oval makeup brushes. Now, most people say, where did you get your oval makeup brush? I just got it off eBay. So um, I don't know whether you could probably find them in your big department stores. Um, but um, it is, is just an oval makeup brush. And it's a brush. It's not a sponge. Everyone thinks it's a sponge. Um, Mary said, I don't have grandchildren, but pre-ordered the set because the sentiments are very versatile. Exactly. All right. Um, you love my color choices, Paula. Thank you. All right. So what I decided to do, oh, the Comfort and Hope stamp set, I thought I would bring out this bit here and I'm going to ink it up with some Versamark ink. Bear with me. It's a brand new stamp set. So I have to put my sticker on because I haven't done that yet. So I'm actually going to um, ink it up with some Versamark and I'm going to heat emboss with my white embossing powder. So because I've actually already laid ink down on my cardstock there, I'm going to um, use my embossing buddy and we will not be having our embossing buddy in our brand new catalog. So if you don't have an embossing buddy, I suggest that you go out and pop an order in today and see if there's one left. I didn't check to see when I got on here whether, so the embossing buddy, what it actually does is it takes all the static off your, your cardstock and it also um, takes any, if there's oily fingerprints, we don't want our embossing powder sticking to anything um, other than what we're, we're actually going to stamp. So I'm gonna grab my Versamark ink now, Versamark ink is a clear ink. You got your brushes from Amazon, Mary? Yep. Um, would Priceline have the brushes? Priceline could, probably could have the brushes. Anywhere that sells like makeup, you might find it in the makeup section. So I'm just going to take my Versamark ink and I'm randomly going to stamp this pattern on the background. And I don't, I don't actually want it um, uniform. I just want it randomly stamped in the background that it's going to create a little bit of interest in behind our card. Uh, I'm going to turn it around that way and do that. And maybe just a little bit down there. All right. So I've inked that up with my Versamark ink and now I'm going to spread my embossing powder over the car. Hey, Jenny, how are you? How's Mike going? I hope he's okay. All right. So I'm just going to spread some embossing powder on that. And I'm just going to pick it up with my tweezers and I'm going to let that fall over there. So I'm not sure whether you can see that, but you can see how the embossing powder has stuck to that ink. So I'll pop that aside. I'll pop my embossing powder back in. Um, Glenda said that she's looked at Priceline up here and they didn't have any. Yeah, I just got mine off eBay. I just jumped on eBay, eBay and typed in oval makeup brushes. Oh, that's awesome, Jenny. I'm glad he came home. Is he doing okay? Okay. All right, so I'm just going to hold that now with my tweezers and bring in my heat tool and heat that up. So all we're doing is creating a background. So we've done some sponging of some color and now we're creating that background with our embossed stamped image. So you'll see there that the embossing paste is now turning white and smooth, melting away. 
Now, I always hate from underneath, it is personal preference what you do. It is totally up to you, whatever you like. I like to heat from underneath and that's my personal preference, but some people heat from on top. It's totally up to you, however you wish to do it. I heat from underneath and get the majority of it done from underneath. And then after I've um, done the underneath part, then I will go on, on the top and finish it off. But you can see that there, it's, it's never ever, not exciting to see that it's it's always an exciting part of card making doing heat embossing so if you've never done heat embossing type in the comments and let me know if you've never done heat embossing before type in the comments and say never heat embossed and let me know because i'm hoping that i'm showing you or some people something that they haven't already seen before i know a lot of you will be doing heat embossing but there's also some people out there that have never discovered this awesome, fun technique. So I've done that and then I'm just going to take that off and I'm just going to make sure, go over the top, make sure that I've got all of the bits and pieces done, which I have. Okay. Now, you will find that the heat will warp your cardstock a little bit. But when it cools down, it will tend to um, smooth out again. And you can sort of bend it back a little bit. Oh, that's awesome, Jenny. I'm glad he's doing, um, doing fairly well. Um, I've been thinking about you. I really have. All right. So we have that done and it looks gorgeous. So then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to layer up these. So you can see that that's just creating a little bit of interest in behind our layer. Now I've got to work out what stamps out of here I'm going to use. I like the fact that it says best grandkid ever, but I want to an amazing grandson. You are so loved. So I think what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do you are so loved. And once again, I'm so sorry, I have to put my stickers on. But isn't this the fun of having brand new stamps that you get to, when you get to play with them, you get to pop those stickers on. And it's really nice when you get there and you go, I've got, whoops, a daisy there. I've got all my stickers on. That means I've used every stamp in the set, which is super, super exciting. You are so loved. And um, to an amazing grandson, where's that one? That one there, to an amazing grandson. And it's here. Um, what's Mary asking? Is CA California, trying to learn the abbreviations for American states. I'm with you there, Mary. Um, but yeah, normally you can have a pretty good guess at it. Okay, so that one there. All right, so I think I actually also want to use this one here in the comfort and hope. So I think I want to add a little bit of um, interest to that background. So I'm going to take that one off and mount it up. Sorry, I was going to get this all done ahead of time, but time got away on me this morning, as it does. Oh, was it your birthday, Mary? Oh, okay. So you got birthday cards from the US and you've been checking out what states they live in. <laughs> All right. So I think what I want to do for a little bit of interest here, I think I'm just going to use the gray granite and I'm probably going to use my scrap piece of paper because I'm going to use Night of Navy for You Are So Loved. So I'll get that sorted try and put it on my block straight, which might make me stamp it a little bit better. You are so loved. 
down there. Now this is from our Stitch So Sweetly dies that goes with our So Sentimental bundle. If you do not have our So Sentimental bundle, I am telling you that is a massive staple in your craft room. I am telling that you that you will absolutely love it. Um, it has, I'll actually grab it because I need to show you, it is awesome. I've got them spread all over the place here. So the So Sentimental Bundle is this one here. So it's got great, awesome sayings in it, but it has these wonderful dies. So we have these gorgeous scalloped rectangles and there's more, more gorgeous rectangles. And then we have these layers as well. So it is a fantastic, even if you just purchased the dies themselves, you will use them time and time again in your craft room for your crafting. All right, so I've inked that one up with our gray granite. So I'm just going to stamp that down because I'm, I'm not real sure how much. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp it off once because I want to put a little bit of interest on this white label so that it doesn't look so stark and bare. So I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to do it that way. No, I'm going to do it that way. Like that. Okay. So can you see there? I've taken that big white area. I've actually used a stamp to cover up a bit of that big white area. And then I'm just going to grab a little sentiment strip, which if I can grab one here. And the other one that says to an awesome grandson, I'm going to ink that up. Now, I don't know whether I want to do this in Night of Navy or if I want to bring in some of the bumblebee colour, but we actually don't have the bumblebee, but I could use maybe crushed curry. Let's see what that looks like. So I've got that one there and you can vote on it here. I'll get rid of that horrible sheet because we don't need that anymore. So I've got Night of Navy there, but let's try crushed curry. And you can, we can vote on this and see which one we want to do. So we've got that one and we've got crushed curry to an awesome grandson. Okay, so we can do the Knight of Navy or we can do the Crush Curry. I'm thinking the Crush Curry is gonna bring in more of the coloring, which will um, make for bringing the, the two colors together. What do you think? Type into the comments and let me know. 64 watching Glenda. Mine's got 75 now. <laughs> Keep sharing, people. Let's see if we can get over the 100 mark again this morning because I love finding out that I get over 100 watching me at once, which is fantastic. I'll clean up this desk a little bit more. The crushed curry. Yeah, if we had bumblebee, I would have I would have used bumblebee, but we don't have it yet. I can tell you I will be jumping on first thing on Wednesday morning and ordering those ink pads. I'm hoping they're going to be available. So speaking of our in colors, if you don't know, I'm doing an in color club. So if you're interested in purchasing the in colors and um, you were a little bit worried about having to purchase them all at once, I have the solution for you. Being a part of my in color club, it runs for five months and you get to, um, and that's going to be too little, that one. I didn't, oh, I'm going to have to stamp that to an amazing grandson again. Let's, well, I think we're going to use a cross curry anyway, aren't we? Let's do that one there. So I'm bringing in my triple banner punch to banner that. And I'm thinking that's going to look good. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the crush curry. <laughs> Linda's saying I'm happy with whichever. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put that back so I don't end up with a mess everywhere. All right. So I've got a piece of, now I'm going to pop this together. So I've got a piece of our um, Misty Moonlight, which is our brand new in colour. 
So if you were interested in my In Colour Club, you only have to go over to um, my website, which is stampingwithdonnag.com, not this one up here, stampingwithdonnag.com, and you will be able to access um, my member clubs over there. So you can see this is how I'm popping this one together. And we have this one coming in through here. And we need a little bit of ribbon. So we may as well use the brand new in color. So we'll see if we want to do bumblebee ribbon or if we want to do misty moonlight ribbon. So we might have a bit of a vote on that one. Okay, so this one here, I'm going to trim that off, that little sentiment layer. So trim it off just like that. And he's going to go up there. Now, um, I'm going to stamp something on this insert. Um, what will we seen it's a grandson so smart so fun so sweet and so wonderful maybe best grandkid ever boys like to be told that they're the best ever don't they so we might do that one best grandkid ever that one there so i might do a similar thing again bringing some of that from the front to the inside we might do a little bit of that um, I don't know what you would call it. It's sort of like a, um, is it herringbone or is it not herringbone? The, um, the paving looks like brick paving. All right, I'm going to stamp that off. I'm going to stamp it off. And then I'm going to, I think I might stamp it that way like that. Okay. And then maybe and that just gives a bit of a grungy sort of look. We will use our night of navy and do best grandkid ever. Make sure I get it right. Um, Susan saying, so Susan's just joined my team. Your Wild Heart Crafters team are very talented. I've been checking you all out. Oh, thank you, Susan. Um, and now Susan has taken me up on um, the wonderful, awesome deal of joining my team. And she's been having some great times in amongst our team page. Chevron type pattern. Yeah, I know. It's sort of like, I, I don't know what you would call it, but something like that. Anyway. So now I've got to work out how I'm going to put some ribbon on here because we need some ribbon and I've, I've got to work out, are we going to do, and I feel like I just want to do a little pop of ribbon underneath to an awesome grandson. So a little thing like that and having it up here. I'm thinking just like that, just to give it a pop of ribbon. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to have to go that one. I was going to, I didn't know whether I wanted to go Crush Curry or our Misty Moonlight, but I'm thinking I need to do Misty Moonlight. Let's cut that because it's not going to take much ribbon. That one there. And then that. So you can see my thought process in behind here. or our bumblebee. Yes, Jenny, you need to look after yourself as well. <laughs> Everyone's saying, yes, Misty Moonlight. All right, so I'm going to just stick with the Misty Moonlight. And I'm what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to use a little bit of snail. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of snail up in that corner there. And I'm just going to lay that 
on that label, just like that. Okay, so it's a little bit like a ribbon, like you've done so well, and then I'll be able to pop um, to an amazing grandson over the top. All right, so of course we need to start adhering these on. So I'm going to, with this one, I'm going to just use my liquid glue and glue it down. Yeah, I know um, Jenny Jenny was saying that her, her surgery that she was supposed to be having at the beginning of June got postponed to the end of June now. It's a crazy world that we're living in. Really is. Okay, so I'm going to glue that one down directly onto there. So liquid Tombow again, liquid Tombow is the glue of choice when you want it to, I'm going to actually glue it over to the side a little bit because um, I think with males, they like things not to be neat and tidy. You know what I mean? So I think with um, doing your male themed cards, remember to add a little bit of quirkiness to it because it keeps them interested. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to pop this one on the insert. So you can see that bringing that um, pattern to the inside brings a bit of the front of your card to the inside. And then I'm going to pop this one up on dimensionals because it needs a little bit of dimension because I'm sure Geraldine would be out there saying to me, Donna, where's the dimensionals? How come you haven't used any dimensionals yet? <laughs> that's because I want to pop this one up and I also want to pop the sentiment layer up as well. So, and as I said, please don't be skimpy with those dimensionals. You want the card to stay together. You want it to be still popped up and still full of life when it gets to your recipient. So this technique here, I learned off my lovely friend, Rose Ward from New York in the U S um, you poke it in and twist as you pull it out. So twist as you pull it out and um, and then you collect, except for that one, that one didn't want to come off. Come on, come off there. And you collect them all on your take your pick tool. If you don't have a take your tick pool, tick, uh, take your pick tool, it is definitely a must in your craft room. All right, so I'm going to glue that one on there like that. And then I'm going to pop this one up with some dimensionals as well. <laughs> Gerald is saying, exactly, Donnie, you need dimension on your card. Of course you do. All right. Now, the one main thing with male cards is not to bling them up too much. But in saying that, we have these gorgeous new in-colour epoxy dots. And I'm thinking just a couple of these around will not look too bad on a male-themed card. I might actually use one of those to bring in that yellow. Um, maybe there. So there you have a super simple, fun card for the best grandkid kid ever, which I'm sure he would love that. Best grandkid ever. What do you think? Give me the thumbs up. Hit that like button if you absolutely um, think that you would have a grandchild or a male in your life. Um, that would love a card like that. All right. So now what I've decided to do is I wanted to do a female orientated card using the same stamp set, but I wanted to do some different colors and I wanted to use some of the in colors again. This is our gorgeous paper from, I'm trying to think of what, um the flower set is called someone can help me out with the name if you like the um flowers for every season yes flowers for every season suite so i decided that i was going to do a little bit of a fun fold card here today because fun folds are super super fun so i've got a piece of whisper white thick i always if i'm going to do a white card base I always um, love to use the thick Whisper White because it stays nice and sturdy. If you know, our thin Whisper White is a lot thinner than the rest of our cardstock. And that's because um, Stamp It Up really has designed our Whisper White to go in our, the inserts of our cards. So this um, 
And Glenda says, looks great. My grand would love, love it. I'll have to get busy. Exactly. Okay. So I've done that five and three, five and three quarters by eight inches scored at four inches to give me four inches by five and three quarter inches. I've also then popped another score line. You probably can't see that on the video, but I've popped another score line on the opposite side so that this will actually fold back like that. So this is going to give us a Z fold card, okay? Um, so these are super, super easy to do. And um, oh, I was gonna say, I'm missing a bit. There should be this bit as well. So they're super, super easy to do. It's just, and you don't even really have to do that fold. You could actually just fold that back manually and score it with your bone folder. All right, so I've cut some pieces of cardstock here. Now, I wanted to, I, what I did was I took the designer series paper and I looked at the designer series paper and I thought, we have Magenta Madness, which is one of our brand new in colors. We have Misty Moonlight in there. We also have, um, I'm thinking it's Calypso Coral that's in there. And we also have Mint Macaron that we could use or and our um, Just Jade. But I took the pink and the blue out of the designer series paper and that's how I worked out my color scheme. So if you're having a hard time working out what color schemes to go with, grab a piece of designer series paper look at the colors that are in the designer series paper. And the beauty of it is with our designer series paper on the back, Stampin' Up! make it really, really easy for us. They tell us exactly what the coordination colors are with that designer series paper. So they make our job so much easier. So if you're brand new to Stampin' Up! that is the one thing that I can guarantee that most people say that they love about Stampin' Up! Type into the comments what you think is the most um, reason why you like Stamping Up products. Tell me what the, what the best attribute that you think that Stampin' Up have is why you choose to use Stampin' Up products. So this here is cut at um, three and three quarters by five and a half. I've done this one at three and five eighths, the Misty Moonlight, three and five eighths by five and three eighths to give me that tiny, tiny little border. I'm going to glue that in because I'm not going to do anything else there. I'm not going to stamp on that. So um, it, um, Catherine's saying, I love the term git. I'm not quite sure what you mean, Catherine. Is it something to do with my Aussie accent? <laughs> Are you saying git when I might mean get? <laughs> I'm not real sure. So I'm just going to glue that in there and that's all going to be good. Okay, so then we have this piece here. So what I've done once again, I've got these layers here um, and I've lined them up and I've cut them an eighth of an inch smaller. This one's an eighth of an inch smaller again. So this here gives us two inches by five and three quarter inches. So my magenta madness is cut at one and seven eighths of an inch by five and three eighths. No, five and five eighths. Sorry, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, it's you, Jenny. <laughs> um, and then this one here is cut an eighth of an inch smaller and this one is cut um, a quarter of an inch smaller. Oh, okay, Catherine. I was thinking, am I saying some word like in a slang way because us, us Aussies are known for that. Okay, so I'm just going to line those two up as well. So you can see you've got that tiny little border and I'm also going to line this one up and I've got a bigger border on this one because I wanted to see more of that misty moonlight because I wanted to bring in the designer series paper, there's not a lot of that misty moonlight. So I wanted to bring a little bit more out on the card. So I've, I've done that a quarter of an inch smaller. So can you see there how my layers, I've got a tiny minute layer and then I've got a bigger layer on the outside. You can play around with your layer sizes. Like it is so, so easy 
to say, I want to see a little bit more of that color. So instead of doing the eighth of an inch smaller, you do a quarter of an inch smaller. Or if you wanted to see more of that color again, instead of doing a quarter of an inch smaller, you may do half an inch smaller and get a bigger border around. So um, my English is fine. Catherine, thank you. <laughs> All right, so I feel like I need some ribbon here. I feel like I need to bring in, and I'm thinking I might bring in the gorgeous, pink ribbon we will check it out and you can let me know we can vote on this ribbon what color ribbon do we want do we want to bring in a totally new color and bring in some of the jade i'm going to do this as a layer on here and then do another rectangle on there so do we want to bring in some jade do we want to bring in some of the gourd and we are doing it for a girl, remember? Some of the beautiful um, magenta madness. Or do we want to bring back in our misty moonlight? So tell me what colour ribbon you think we should have. Look at that. Got pins everywhere. You like the layering, Gerilyn? Thank you. Okay, so what have we got? Um coordination you agree with Annette never-ending ideas for cards on YouTube yep because there's lots of us demonstrators out there giving you things the DSP is truly divine okay so we have magenta 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 pink pink magenta you know what oh my god magenta has full-on definitely got the vote all right so we are going to do magenta madness. <laughs> All right. So because I'm going to pop some ribbon on there, I want to do the ribbon before I glue it onto that layer. So I'm just going to grab some of my double-sided tape. I'm going to pop some double-sided tape down on that end and that end. Take the backing off with my take your pick tool. Okay, and then we're going to lay that into our double-sided tape and straight down the middle, like that. How do I store my ribbon? Okay, um, I have a ribbon holder, Jenny, that is from Spotlight. And it's a ribbon holder that, hang on and I see if I can take a picture of one. I'll take a picture of one and I'll show it to you on my phone. Are you ready for this? This is called being, okay. Are you ready for it? I'm gonna bring my phone in here. Can you see that? It's actually a, um, it's a stand and it has like, um, bits of dowel across and the dowel comes out and you thread your ribbons on and then pop the dowel back in. You can see the dowel slides out of these slots on the sides. Um, so that is actually how I store my ribbon. Now that was a little bit of inventiveness, wasn't it? How can I show you what my ribbon stand looks like? I'm like, well, I can't put my ribbon stand on my desk because it won't fit. Okay, so I'm going to glue that down onto the front. And you'll see there that I've got like a nice white edge border happening there as well. Okay. So this one here, I think I actually want that to go under the ribbon. So I think I'm actually going to glue that on with my Tombow. So I know that I'm only going to glue that side on. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to slide it in under my ribbon and set it where I want it to sit. So I want it to sit about there. So it's so easy to do these fun folds. Is it mega dollars? No, Jenny, it was really cheap. It was like $20. Like it was so cheap. It was, um, they were having a bit of a special and they had them and they were $20. I got two of them and two of them is enough for, all of the current ribbon that's normally in a catalog, two is enough to hold all of the ribbons. It's got one, two, three, four, five lots of dowel across it. So yeah, 
um, very, very um, easy. All right, so I wanna bring some of this gorgeous designer series paper. I'm going to pop this in as my insert and I'm going to work out what I'm actually going to stamp on there because this is for a granddaughter, remember? So um, I'm thinking that we're going to stamp so smart, so fun, so sweet and so wonderful because that sounds like it's for a granddaughter. I'm positive it does. So once again, I think I'm going to bring in Melon Mumbo. Seeing we don't have the um, gorgeous Magenta Madness, I'm going to bring in Melon Mumbo and I'm going to grab that sentiment. So smart, so fun, so sweet and so wonderful. And I'm going to stick my sticker on it because I want that done. So bear with me while I do that. Won't take me long. And you might say, do you spend a day sticking all your stickers on? The answer is no. You can see that I do it as I use them. And as I said, I get a really good accomplishment when every single sticker is on all of them. I know that I've used every single stamp. All right, so we've got that and we'll pop that on there. And I'm going to stamp that just here. All right. So I'm going to stamp that and I want to stamp it over towards here. I'm going to pop a strip of beautiful paper down that side, but I want to stamp it over towards here because we want it to be in behind this layer on the front. Okay. So, so fun. So smart, so fun, so sweet and so wonderful. All right. And I'm going to take, so just a strip of that designer series paper. I'll have to bring in my paper trimmer. Actually, I might just bring in my little one. And I'm just going to do, I'm thinking maybe just an inch. Like that. Okay, so maybe just an inch and pop just an inch of that coming down here. And then when that sits in behind there, we're going to see it in behind there as well. Okay. All right. So I'm going to glue that on and then I'll just trim off the bit that's overlaying, overhanging, I mean. So we'll glue that on. You need to put an order in, Jenny. There. So Jenny, did you get your card kit? All right. I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to pop that over. I think you did tell me that you got it. Okay, so you can see that. Look at that. It's just made a really gorgeous insert. Tiny bit of paper. Um, and oh, <laughs> Helen's saying that she has one from Spotlight as well. Yeah, it was great. And honestly, Helen, it wasn't that expensive, was it, the ribbon holder? Okay, so I'm going to glue that to the inside. So just like that. Okay, so this is coming together quite nicely. All right, so now what we need is something on the front and I'm feeling like I wanna use, uh, what have we got? We've got to an extraordinary granddaughter, but we need to, We might do, to an extraordinary granddaughter, you are so loved. So we might do it the other way, like we did the first one. So I need another little rectangle. Does that one fit? Oh, that one will fit. I'll just grab that in a bit of wisp of white. Bear with me, I'll just cut it off camera. It'll be quicker and easier. So I've just used one of my stitched rectangles here and that's going to fit on there nicely. All right. So I think I'm going to do the you are so loved and I might do you are so loved in night of Navy and I might do um, the 
to an extraordinary grandeur. I'll do that in our melon mambo. So you are so loved like that. Okay. And we need, I'll take that away. We need that other sentiment. To an extraordinary granddaughter. And I love the font on this one. Like it's really, really super cute. The, the scrolly font, like it makes it look girly, I think. Okay, so that one. And I'm going to stamp that on just a strip of cardstock as well. So I've got that. Now these are just my off cuts. From when I cut my layers, I always have off cuts. Um, and they're always handy to keep them. Don't ever throw them out because they're always super, super handy to keep them. To an extraordinary granddaughter. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay. And I'm thinking in our um, stamp set, which where did I put it? Here. We have oh, I've got ribbon everywhere now. My ribbon just fell off the desk. We have this cute little um, flower. I won't spend the time to... Um, pop that on a sticker. I'll just pop it on a block and we'll get that stamped. We might actually do that in Daffodil Delight. Actually, no, I'm going to bring in Mint Macaron. Mint Macaron, sorry. I'm just going to stamp that. I actually want to stamp it that's going to go off. So I need a bit of scrap paper. It's going to go off the side of the page, but that's okay. I'm going to go down here like that. Okay. And then we're going to have here. How's that looking? All right, so I'm going to pop that one up on dimensionals. So pull off the backings. Oh, I'm up to 106. Oop. And we're going to pop that. And I want it to straddle over that ribbon so that the ribbon looks like it's coming in behind. This one here. We're going to use my triple banner punch again. Banner the end. That's looking cute. And I think I'm actually going to glue this one down. I think I'm going to cut that and glue it down. Oh, it could have been that Helen. I don't, I can't remember. Like, um, Helen's saying that she thought hers was $16. So see, Jenny, it's probably not even um, not even as expensive as I'm saying it is. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'll do that with my liquid glue. Is it your anniversary tomorrow, Jenny? Happy anniversary for tomorrow. That one there. 
And of course, we need a bit of bling to make it look pretty. And we also need a bow. I'm positive that we need a bow. We can't have a, a girl's birthday card, a granddaughter's birthday card without a bow. Okay. So I'm gonna tie a cute bow. And I think the bow can go up the top. Oh, really, Jeanette? Spotlight in Newcastle was closed because it got flooded from the rain. We had heavy rain here early this morning, but it's cleared off again. Now. It's a bit overcast now, but the rain has stopped at least. All right, so you know me with my ribbon. I like to pop it into some double-sided tape to make sure it stays on my card. So actually that's a little bit of overkill for double-sided tape. We just need about half an inch at the most. And I'm just going to pop that up in that corner there of that label. And my bow is going to be able to stick into that double-sided tape. So it sits really nicely. It's looking super cute. And of course, we need to finish it off with some bling. So we'll use some of the gorgeous Magenta Madness epoxy drops and I've now got two ah, ones under my fingernail there oh get out from under the fingernail there I think that looks cute what do you think and actually you know what you know me Maybe a bit of wink of Stella just on our gorgeous little greenery. How cute is that? There you go. A nice, cute, fun fold card to an extraordinary granddaughter. You are so loved, so smart, so fun, so sweet, and so wonderful. So I'm sure that there would be a granddaughter out there that would super, super be excited for that card as well. So let's move on again. I'm gonna bring in another fun fold. I'm killing two birds with one stone here. I have a swap that I'm in that I need fun folds for so I thought I will do some fun folds for you this morning and that will get my swap cards done as well all right so you may be looking at this piece of cardstock and think how in the world did you do that so what I did is I lined up a full sheet of our A4 cardstock I lined up a full sheet and you may want to take off your um, scoring blade so that you can get your, um, now I'm just going to do that. I'll take off the scoring blade and pop it out of the way. If I can get it off, pop it out of the way. So if you take your scoring blade off, you get more of a cutting track, all right, on your um, paper trimmer because what you need to do, hang on, I'll get a full sheet so you can see how a full sheet works. What you're going to do is get a full sheet of your cardstock and you're going to line it up in your trimmer. We're going to pop this corner in the track here and this corner in the track down here. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. So you're going to line that up and line that up and you're actually going to, um, to cut that through. So the hard part is getting it to cut because it actually doesn't sit down properly on the end. So you're just going to line that up and cut that through like that. Now, if you have some pieces that aren't cut through properly when you do this, so you may have a piece down here and a piece up here that's not cut through properly. What you do is you just grab your scissors 
and run your scissors along there because it will be only a couple of slight little pieces that haven't cut right through. And it's just because your blade probably hasn't connected properly, but you can cut it through and you end up with your cardstock cut like a triangle. Okay. So um, if you haven't done this before, you are going to absolutely love it. So then what I'm going to do is now, I have seen some people when they get to this stage that they actually put it in and they score it in a certain place. I'm actually not going to do that. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my paper trimmer here and I'm going to line that corner up with that straight edge and with the corner and I'm actually going to just fold it like that and use my bone folder and just crease it like that, okay? So then you're going to get one fold like that. Then with this piece, I'm actually going to, sorry, line it up like this, that we're going to make sure that that is going to fold nicely. All right. And then it's going to fold really nicely into my corner here. And I'm just going to, with my bone folder, I'm going to get it out of the trimmer with my bone folder. So I'm lining up those edges there. I'm lining up this corner here and I'm just going to, with my bone folder, crease that nicely. Okay. So that's as easy as it is. And you end up with a card like this or a card like this or a card like this. So you can do it any way that you want. Or um, if you want you can actually fold them over the other way and then it gives you a card like that. Can you see that? So you can do it any way you want. You can have it sitting any way you want. Okay. So now I've got a sheet of designer series paper and you may think, how am I going to line up the layers for on the front of this? So I think what I might do is I might bring in some of the bumblebee and I'll cut a layer of bumblebee. I can find my bumblebee, there it is. So, what you need to do is you need to measure what your card front size is now. So, I'm gonna bring in a ruler and it measures four and one eighth by, it'll be five and three quarters, five and three quarters, all right? Four and one eighth by five and three quarters. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do five and a half. And because it was four and one eighth, I'm actually going to do three and seven eighths. And then with my designer series paper, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do three and seven eighths. I'm going to do it three and three quarters and that was five and a half wasn't it let me see no that was five and a quarter okay so i'm going to do it four, uh, four and seven eighths please let me hope i've got that right <laughs> no, let's try that again. All right, so I've got this at five and a quarter. Okay. I shouldn't forget that one. <laughs> we need it five and a half. Because the front of our card is five and three quarters. We need it at five and a half by three and seven eighths. Now let's sit that on here. Five and a half by three and seven eighths. Can you see that? So we've got that layer there. Okay, so now I'm gonna just grab another piece of that paper. 
which is there. Okay, so three and seven eighths, we're going to do three and three quarters. I'm going to double check that. I've got three and seven eighths there. I'm going to do it three and three quarters by five and three eighths. And that is going to give me a layer on there like that. Can you see that? All right. Now, before I take my paper trimmer away, I'm now going to cut those layers in half, just like the front of my card. So you can see here that we have the big bit going across the top. So I'm going to pop that corner up in my paper trimmer and this bottom corner down here in the paper trimmer. So just like that. And I'm going to pop my blade in the middle and go up and down. So we have those two pieces. They're going to layer onto there. We're going to do the same thing with our designer series paper. We're going to put the wide side going across the top. So we're going to pop them both into our track. We're going to pop our blade into the middle and we're going to cut those two pieces like that. Okay. And then I also need to cut a wisp of white layer. So I'll grab that. And the wisp of white layer is going to be um, five and a half. by three and seven eighths again. And that is going to go on the insert of our card. So just like that, okay. And I'm also gonna do a strip of our designer series paper. This little bit that I've got left over, I'm sure will fit across the bottom, so it will. So I've got a little piece left over there and I'm going to use that in across the bottom. All right, so let's start putting this card together. I'm going to bring in my liquid Tombow. Oh, we're up to 121 people. Keep sharing everyone. Share back onto your Facebook profile so we can see if we can get more people. Let's see the amount that we can get to this morning. So I'm just going to layer that up onto that layer of bumblebee. Okay. So we've got a tiny minute layer all the way around. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. These cards are super easy to make. The hardest part on this card is actually just working out um, the trimming once you've worked out the trimming the folding i find it easier to fold it like if i had to try and work that out by um by actually like measuring and scoring that would do my head in so um i find it is easier by doing it that way okay so there we have our two layers ready to go on the front um, and I'm going to pop those layers up, I think. Do I want them popped up? No, I'm not. I'm going to glue them down. <laughs> Indecisive once again. I'm going to glue them down. I'm going to pop a little bit of ribbon along this bottom part, I think. Do I want a bit of ribbon? No, I'm not. I'm going to... Just glue it down. Sorry, I I haven't, I, I knew I was going to make one of these cards, but I haven't actually got exactly how I was going to do it in my brain. I just knew I was going to make one. So I'm just going to glue that on there. And this one here, I'm going to glue on the top. I asked people to share and now my numbers have gone down. <laughs> we were up to 120 and now they've gone down. All right, so we've got that and that. So you can see it gives you a really gorgeous looking shape. I'm going to glue that onto this piece here as well. Actually, I'm gonna leave that. I'm just gonna grab my sunflower stamp, which I need to see if I can find where I put that there. All 
All right. Because what I want to do is I want to stamp a few little flowers here. And I think I'm going to do it with my crushed curry, I think. So that it looks like it's going to blend in. Although, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something different here. In my daubers, I'm going to bring in my crushed curry. And I'm also going to bring in my mint macaron. So are you ready for this? I want to make this flower coloured. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring in a sponge dauber and I'm going to grab my crushed curry and I'm going to ink up the flower part of this stamp. So like that. Okay, I'm going to bring in this dauber here for mint macaron and I just sat my ink pad in my glue. I'll sit it over there so I don't get it on my desk. So mint macaron for the leaves. And I feel like I want to do soft suede, I think, in the middle. Suede. And I think I'll use that one there. So soft suede in the middle. Okay, so you're ready for this. And then I'm going to huff on it. And I just sat that in that ink again. And I'm just going to stamp that like that. Okay, can you see that gorgeous flower that we just got? I'll bring that up. Look at that. Okay, just by using your sponges. So don't feel like you can't do something as far as coloring when it comes to a stamp. Um, <laughs> Deborah's saying that I'm so fun to watch. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> okay. So I've got that and then I'm going to, and I've just sat that ink pad in my glue as well. So I'll pop that over there. Okay, so I'm then going to pop that just down on that bottom. So I've got a little flower that's popping up and we've got the designer series paper happening as well. So it's gonna, when they open it up, they're gonna see this gorgeous flower, okay? So I'm gonna glue that into the insert of my card. Just bear with me, I'm going to grab a baby wipe and wipe all of the backs of my ink pads where I sat them in the glue. So that I don't end up with glue all over my desk. Okay, so that's one. And I think I sat that one in it too, maybe, maybe not. Okay, I've done my clean up, I'm, I'm good to go. All right, so I'll grab my glue and I'll glue that into the insert. Like that. Now, I think what I want to do is on the front, I'm thinking that, and I just had ink on my fingers. I'm thinking that I want to do this gorgeous big sunflower. I'm thinking that I want to cut it out. I want to stamp it. So I'm going to grab my big block. I'm going to stamp it. I'm going to do that sponging technique again. So I'm going to grab a piece of Whisper White. I'm going to grab that and I will ink it up with my crushed curry. A 
actually to tell you the truth, I'm just going to ink it up like that with my crushed curry. And then I'm just going to go through with my soft suede in the middle with the sponge dauber. Because it doesn't matter. The soft suede is going to be darker. So it's going to, um, and I think I might do a little bit of pumpkin pie. Just in that area there. And maybe around the outside edge. So I've used crushed curry, a little bit of pumpkin pie around the edges and around that center part and some soft suede. I'm gonna go back through with my soft suede just to there. All right, so we're ready for this. We're going to huff on this. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm very entertaining and super creative. Thank you. I'm going to huff on this. The reason we huff on it is to make it wet again. Okay. I'm going to stamp down. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready for the wow factor? Look at that. Can you see the difference in your coloring? So we've got crushed curry, we've got pumpkin pie, and we've got soft suede. So that is looking absolutely stunning. And now what I want to do with that is I want to cut it out with the dies that match. So we have a die that matches the outside here. Now you can see, and I was watching Emma Goddard doing this. You can see that there's like three petals that want to tip down that way. You can see here on your die that you've got the three going down that way. The rest are all going all quite evenly, but then you can see these three that stick out. If you pop that on to there, bingo you can cut that shape out really, really easily. Same thing goes with the next bit, but get ready for it because I'm going to do something quite um, exciting here because I've been wanting to do this. I was actually thinking about planning this yesterday, but I ended up by, um, I'm going to bring in the big show for you. Okay. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Just bear with me. I'm going to zoom out a bit so that that big shot is not so um, in your face. Okay, so that's a little bit. You're going to see more of my desk, but that's okay because you're going to see what I'm going to do here. So once again, look at those pieces that, um, that you'll see um, have those little petals that are poking down so you can see there's one two three the rest are all quite even these three look like they're going at a different direction when you line your stamp up and you die up with those three you should have no problem popping those together okay so i'm going to run that through and that's going to cut out my gorgeous sunflower. So we've got that happening. All right. But now I want to bring in, we have the, um, um, where did I just put that sunflower stencil? There. We have the intricate dye that we have that goes with it as well. So I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to grab some gold foil sheets. And I'll just cut a bit of gold foil to be able to cut that out. Hopefully I'll cut a big bit big enough. 
please tell me that's big enough. Yep, it is. And we're going to run that through. Um, yes, Kerry, honestly, when um, Emma Goddard did that, I was like, thank you. I needed to know that because I was struggling when it came to lining them up as well. So, um, and when she pointed that out, it, she, she made it so easy. I was like, well, that has just made it so much clearer how to line it up. And then even when you go to do this part as well, lining it up. Now, look at this. Isn't this stunning? Oh, I'll zoom back out again. We'll go back to there. Come on, back to there. Okay. Actually, I'll zoom in because you really need to see this. You need to see how lovely this is. Look at it. Isn't that just stunning? And you can see the pieces drop out pretty easy. I haven't even used a pokey tool just yet. There's a couple of pieces that um, I will need to poke out with my pokey tool in this piece here. But other than that, it is absolutely stunning. And Emma was actually doing some beautiful watercolored sunflowers. So um, I think I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this set. I actually, to tell you the truth, I wasn't I wasn't big on sunflowers, but since I've I've purchased this bundle and since I've played with it, I, I physically cannot put it down. This sunflower is just so striking. So, so beautiful. All right, so we have that and that. Then back in. I'll bring the stamp set back because there's probably something in the stamp set that I'm gonna to wanna to stamp on this card. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So we'll move that all off the desk. All right. So same thing goes when we're going to line this up. We're going to search for those three. So here they are again, the three that are wanting to point down that way. On our die cut here, the three that are wanting to point down that way, line them up and look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. All right, I'll zoom back out again. All right, so I'm actually going to line that up. I want to, I think I want to pop dimensionals on the back of it because I want it to actually sit up off that. So I'm going to grab some dimensionals. So I'm actually going to pop just some little mini dimensionals around in the center part of that. I can find my minis. There they are. So I'm just going to pop some mini dimensionals just around the inside of that. Maybe one more. <laughs> and here I go with my dimensionals. Oh, maybe another one there. And uh, maybe another one there. And seeing I'm doing that, <laughs> another one there. <laughs> we want it to sit up nicely, don't we? <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna take the tops off all of those. Sorry, the backing pieces off all of those. So I was going to actually jump on and do a little bit of crafting yesterday, but um, some of you that might know me well, um, I've had a super, super sore wrist. Actually, it's and my arm has been super, super sore. So I'm going to find those three that are sticking down again. And we're going to look at this one. And here's our three that are sticking down again. So we're going to line those up. And when we line those up, we can then pop our sunflower over the top. And so yesterday afternoon, I actually went and got acupuncture on my arm. And 
um, it was actually my arm was just so tight all in all the muscles here and and look at my bruise <laughs> he my acupuncturist massaged so well and I, like it's so super super sore I have no idea what I've done to it um, and it's not good to not be able to um, move your arm freely it's just been like yeah super super hard so um, I was actually going to jump on and stamp but um, <laughs> Mary says, Kylie, Kylie says, Kylie Batucci says that they got the trips because of Bruno's love of dimensionals. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit the same, I think. Um, okay, so we've got that. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do that up there, but I think I'm going to stamp um, thanks a bunch, I think, or let's celebrate you. Maybe let's celebrate you. We'll stamp that on there now apparently it is really on trend at the moment and you're all probably going to scream when i say what i'm going to do here so i have a piece of whisper white here and i think i'm going to stamp it in i think night of navy seeing we've got that out and i think i'm going to fussy cut the sentiment it is really really trendy at the moment to fussy cut your sentiments and i know that you all go oh i don't want a fussy cut and that is really not good i'm going to grab another piece because i smudged that let's go again my knight of navy is very inky and i pressed a little bit hard with that that i didn't need to we'll go again that's better all right and i'm actually gonna make sure that that dries well and our inks normally do dry really well but because it's a dark ink I like to actually make sure so I don't end up um, making a mess of it okay and now I'm in trouble I've lost my scissors oh, there they are. okay so I think I'm going to fussy cut this so it honestly doesn't take that long to fussy cut, but it gives you such a beautiful look. And remember to move your cardstock, not your scissors. When you move your cardstock, you get a much smoother cut than if you move your scissor blades. All right, so you just slowly trim with your blades, but as you turn corners, you turn your cardstock and off you go. But it looks so much better. And I think the more that you do it, the better you get at it. But doesn't that look super, super cute? I have to laugh. Um, Lee just said, I hate fussy cutting and, and YouTube holds those comments in review because they think you're saying something wrong. I actually think I'm gonna do it over the top. But I need some ribbon and I need I need some gorgeous um, leaves happening here. What have we got? We've got this, we've got this, and we've got this. So I'm thinking I might cut a few leaves and things out of some gold. So I've got some gold left over. bring that back in again and we'll move that out again so that we can see a little bit better okay so I'm going to grab another bit of gold and we'll cut a few of those bits and pieces out
Okay. That, that. Now I have my magnetic platform here and I love my magnetic platform. Um, except for when you're using smaller dies and they want to jump around where they want to go. But um, I use my magnetic platform just about 99% of the time because it holds your dies in place. All right. So we're going to get these gorgeous die cuts. And I think I might, um, sorry, I didn't show you there, there. I think I might run that through a second time and just get a few of them. And we don't necessarily have to use them all. Sorry, that's probably making a horrible noise. But I can pop them into my stamp set and use them at a later time if I don't use them all. So that and that. But we'll see. We'll go with the flow. See what works with the card. Okay. All right. Keep cleaning up my desk. Oops. All right. So what have we got? We've got this. We've got these. And this. I feel like I've got to put ribbon on there somewhere. I'm not quite sure how or where. <laughs> Okay, so let's arrange this and see what we have. We'll put them back in the case. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to see there. Now I'm right. All right, so these few things, I think I'm going to, I've got to think about when it opens, what we're going to see. Because we don't want to see things so, okay. I'm going to do that up there. So I'm going to work out where I want these to sit. So I'm thinking that they could come down in under there probably have a gorgeous leaf coming out there. I could maybe have some more up through here, there, and maybe that gorgeous leaf there. That's looking super cute. Now, am I going to do this down here? What are you thinking, people? Okay, Cindy, what have we got? I totally agree with Cindy. You like it because it doesn't cover up the card so much. When I put it up the top, Cindy, is that what you're saying? All right. So I'm going to turn this over. And I'm actually just going to put double-sided tape on two-thirds of my flower because that's the bit that I'm going to be sticking all of my bits and pieces in. And so I'm just going to stick that like that and I'll be able to stick all of my pieces into it. Um, the fussy cutting, yeah, okay, so there we go again. It's, it held your um, held your thing again. 
your comment. Must be some word about fussy end cutting. <laughs> I better not say it too many times. I might get thrown off YouTube. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. All right, so I'm just going to peel off the backings off those and then I'm going to arrange those pieces. I'm going to stick them in behind my sunflower. So my sunflower is going to go like that. And you know what? I'm actually just going to tap it down like that. And I'm probably going to pick up the pieces. Look at that. Did you see that trick? I just picked up the pieces and on they went. Okay, so just like that. All right, I'm gonna pop that up on dimensionals because I want it to have a little bit of dimension on the front. You like the sentiment in the middle of the flower? I could probably do it like that. Okay, so I'm just popping some dimensionals on that two thirds where I've where I've popped all of those pieces. And then the main thing is when you go to glue it down that you make sure that you don't get any of your dimensionals popping over, which I don't. So just like that. Okay. I'm thinking I might want to put those down there just to, um, what do you think? Just to add a little bit more bling. That's looking good. All right, so I'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals just on and I want just some mini ones and that will pop my sentiment on here. So I'm gonna pop one there, one there. I'm actually gonna do a double one in the middle and I think they should get covered up. I'm nearly sure that my sentiment layer We'll cover that up. So the reason I'm putting a double one there in the middle is because I've already popped up the sunflower. So I need to have double dimension in the middle because um, the middle is already popped up. And one there. Okay. And then Celebrate You is going to pop over there. Look at that. Cute. Yeah, I'm thinking I might be able to, oh, you know what I reckon I'm going to do? Are you ready for it? We have something really beautiful. Where have I put it though? Okay, that's the next problem. I'm just going to use some of that gold twine, but I think, okay, I'm going to do One of these. I'm just going to do a cute little bow and I'm just going to do a little bow. Just a little bow, not real big holding those two together. I think that will look cute. All right, so I'm gonna pop those on. Just a little bit of glue just on the backs. You don't need a lot of Tombow, it goes such a long way. Just gonna pop that there. And oops, needs to move a little bit so it's not hanging out the side of our card there. And then some on this one. <laughs> A 
Lynn saying, yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> okay, so this one here is going to sit like that, that it's like crossing over on it. And then my super cute little bow. Once again, I've lost my scissors again. I keep taking them over there to cut the foil. I actually was going to use the gold trim that um, is with the um, greenery, forever greenery bundle, the sweet. I was going to use that gold um, twine that we have because I love it. I can't move the sentiment to the bottom, Catherine. It's already stuck on there. So <laughs> it has to stay up there, but that's okay. I did I did the um, the little bow and that makes it a little bit better down the bottom there that it gives something else on the card. Okay, so I'll just pop a bit of double-sided tape there where I want my bow to sit. Pull off the backing. Stick my bow in there. And there you have a super cute, gorgeous card. Okay, so let's bring back the cards that we've made today. Now, stay on because I'm going to pick a winner. A, a, a winner. Sorry. Someone is going to win this gorgeous grandson card. So type in the comments and let me know. Who has a beautiful grandson that you would love to be able to give this gorgeous card to? So type in, in the comments who would like to win one of my beautiful cards. Um, and I'm going to give away this card here, the To an Amazing Grandson. So that was actually done with our... Um, um, where is my stamp set? There. Okay, so this one here was created using our comfort and hope and a grandkid. So type in the comments, who has a grandson? Tell me what your grandson's name is. Type into the comments and I will pick a winner. I don't care whether you live overseas or whether you live here in Australia, I am going to send this card out to someone that has a gorgeous grandson that they would love to give the card to. Um, Sylvia says that she has a grandson and she lives in Australia. Margaret has three beautiful grandsons. What are their names? Tell me their names. Um, Janet has a grandson. You have eight, Golf and Mary. Wow. Um, Lynn only has granddaughters. No grandchildren. <laughs> Do you know what? Golf and Mary, you watch me all the time so i'm actually going to give this card to you so golf and mary what you need to do is email me at bejeweled01 at gmail.com so there's my email address just email me and i will um pop this gorgeous card into the post for you and i don't care that you're in the us so there's three beautiful cards that I have created today using some of our brand new products. So just remember that um, these products will be available coming on the 3rd of June. And I want to thank you all for watching me this morning. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit that bottom right hand corner, hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification. Um, and please share the video if you're watching it back later on and please comment in the video if it's your first time watching if you're new to crafting i love meeting new crafting people so please comment even after if you're watching the replay let me know you're watching the replay replay i love it when i find out who watches my replays after i've um finished my crafting so thank you everybody and i will be back here same time 10 a.m saturday morning next week for my regular youtube live and i wish you all a lovely weekend and until next time happy crafting bye for now